Hello everyone, welcome back to the uh, digital electronic classes. So, in the last video we have already discussed regarding uh, how do we design the 4 bit parallel adder using 4 full adders. Then even we have discussed what is the disadvantage in that design. Then we have designed a 4 bit uh, parallel adder using the carry look ahead generator in order to reduce the propagation delay in the overall circuit. Then uh, we have seen how can we perform subtraction by making use of a addition. So, in the last class already we have designed a circuit that will play the role of a, a 4 bit adder as well as subtractor. Uh, already I have told you what is the working of this particular circuit. Uh, let us have a quick revise of the working. So, as I have already said you whenever we want to perform the subtraction it can be done uh, with the help of addition with the two's complement number. So, we have to keep our first uh, input that is A as it is. Then I have to take the two's complement of a second number B. So, we can obtain the two's complement of a second number by taking uh, one's complement and adding one to it. So, this entire operation is being performed with the help of a XOR gate uh, given to a B inputs. So, whenever the value of M is 0, the whole circuit is going to play the role of a adder. Uh, when the M value is 1, it is going to play the role of a subtractor. So, in the same circuit, we have to include one more uh, logic in order to identify the overflow. So, now the question is what is the meaning of this overflow. So, now assume that I want to add two 4 bit numbers. So, when I add two 4 bit numbers, uh, we have taken only 4 full adders. So, that means uh, I can store only the result of 4 bit. If the addition of two numbers generates 5 bits, then it will be called as overflow or in general we can say that whenever I am trying to add two n bit numbers and after addition if the result occupies n plus 1 bits, then we say that there is an overflow. So, now what we have to do in this uh, adder subtractor circuit, I have to include the logic for identifying the overflow. But whenever we want to detect the overflow, the overflow can be detected in different ways for unsigned numbers as well as for signed numbers. So, let us see how we are going to do that with the help of an example. So, now assume that uh, we are uh, supposed to detect the overflow in case of unsigned numbers. So, now the question is what is the meaning of unsigned numbers? So, when we say unsigned numbers, uh, the entire space will be occupied to store the magnitude of a number. For example, if I want to take a 4 bit number. So, in case of 4 bit number, all the 4 bits will be uh, used to represent the magnitude of a number. Okay? So, now I want to represent uh, this 9 as a 4 bit number. So, you can see 9 can be represent as 1001. Zero, zero, one. Then in a similar fashion I want to write the binary equivalent of 7 using the 4 bit number. So, when I say 4 bit the addition of these two numbers should also occupy 4 bit. Okay? So, now if I perform the addition 1 plus 1 we know that sum is 0 carry is 1. Again for this particular combination we are going to get sum as 0, carry as 1. For this combination again we get sum as 0, carry as 1. For this combination sum as 0 and I get carry as 1. You can see the result of addition is occupying 5 bits. So, if I convert this 5 bit number into its decimal equivalent, I am going to get obviously 16. Okay? So, 9 plus 7 16 is a correct answer, but since I want to represent this number only using 4 bit. So, there is a way to calculate 
the range of numbers range of unsigned numbers so for example i want to calculate the range of four bit unsigned numbers that is calculated using the formula 0 to 2 power n minus 1 okay so that means if i want to store a four bit number that number should fall within this range so what is the starting value a yes, starting value is 0 2 2 power what is our n value n value is 4 2 power 4 minus 1 so 0 to 2 power 4 will be 16 16 minus 1 will be 15 so that means if i want to use only the 4 bit storage i can represent the numbers only between the range 0 to 15 okay but the number what we have got after the addition of 9 and 7 it is 16 it is falling outside the range of the specified numbers so now this this can be identified with the help of this c4 value if the c4 value is 1 then we say that there is an overflow in case of unsigned numbers okay i hope you got this point so whenever we are trying to perform the addition or subtraction of uh, unsigned numbers if the input numbers are 4 bits and the result is occupying 5 bit then we say that there is an overflow so that overflow can be detected with the help of this carry out from this entire circuit but uh, the case is not same with the signed numbers so in order to understand how can i identify the uh, overflow in case of either addition or subtraction of signed numbers again first i have to find out for four bit numbers what is the range of unsigned uh, sorry signed numbers that i can use okay so that is calculated with the help of a formula 2 power n minus 1 2 plus Two power n minus one minus one. Okay. So in our case, again I am going to take the value as four. So when I take the value as four, substitute in this formula. So I am going to get two power four minus one. So it will become two power three. Here yeah, two power three is nothing but minus eight. Two again two power three eight minus one. So I am going to get it as seven. So that means if I want to store the numbers within only 4 bit, I can store only the numbers between this range. Okay? So now let us try to see some examples to understand how can I determine the overflow in case of signed numbers. So first what I want to do, I want to perform the addition of 7 and 1. Okay? So how I am going to represent 7 in binary? So I can write it as 0, triple 1, then 1 is represented, triple 0, 1. So now let us try to perform the addition. 1 plus 1 is, uh, sum is 0, carry is 1. For this combination, again sum is 0, carry is 1. Sum is 0, carry is 1. So here I am getting 1, triple 0. Okay? So but here you can see, I want to store the 4 bit number. The result is also occupying the 4 bit number, but still I say that there is an overflow in this example. So what is the reason for this overflow? If I find out the uh, decimal equivalent of this result binary number, I am going to get the answer as 8. Okay? So 8 does not fall in the range what we have calculated. So that means in case of signed numbers, I can store only minus 8 to 7. So 8 is outside the range. That is one reason for overflow. Another reason is when we are using signed numbers, the most significant bit, this bit is used to represent the sign of a number. In case of unsigned number, all the 4 bits are used to represent the magnitude of a number. But in case of signed numbers, the uh, leftmost bit 
will be used to represent a sign. If it is 0, it is a positive number. If it is 1, it will be a negative number. So, in our example 7 and 1 both are positive numbers. So, it is 0 and 0, but when I perform the addition the result what I am getting and according to the rules of number system. So, this will be used to represent the magnitude and this is used to represent the sign of a number. So, that means, when I add two positive numbers I am expecting the output to be a positive but according to this addition I am getting a negative number. Okay. So, that means there is an overflow in this uh, example. So, in case of unsigned numbers one extra bit will represent a overflow, but that is not the case with signed numbers even though it is occupying only 4 bits, but still there can be a overflow according to this example. Let us see one more example. So, I want to perform minus 7 and minus 3 addition. So, when I add them I am expecting the output to be minus 10 negative value. Let us see what will happen. So, first represent A uh, in 0 triple 1 it is a plus 7. So, now I want to find out 0 triple 1 I want to find out minus 7 means how we are going to do I am going to find out the 1's complement of this. So, 1's complement means 1 triple 0 for this 1's complement again I need to add 1 to get 2's complement. So, the answer will be what here 1 0 0 1. So, minus 7 in 2's complement is 1 0 0 1 okay. in a similar fashion in a similar fashion for b I want to find out minus 3 value in 2's complement. So, uh, what is the positive 3 in binary representation 0 0 1 1 then find out the 1's complement 1 1 0 0 for this add 1. So, I am going to get 1 0 1 1. So, 1 1 0 1 is the uh, minus 3 in 2's complement format. Okay. So, now perform the addition. So, when I perform the addition here I am getting 0 carries 1, here I am getting 1 and here I can see 1 and 1 plus 1 0 and here carry is 1. Okay. In this example it is occupying 1 extra bit. If we ignore this bit, if we use only the 4 bits, this 4 bit here this bit is used to represent the sign of a number. So, we are expecting a negative number, but here I am getting the result as a positive number. Okay. So, again there is an overflow whenever we are trying to add the uh, two negative numbers and answer we are getting it as a positive number and of course, if you see minus 10 it is outside the range what we have calculated calculated. So, that means again it is very obvious that there is an overflow even in this particular example. Okay. So, let us see one more example A is equal to 4, B is equal to 2. Okay. So, what is uh, 4 that is 0 1 0 0 2 will be 0 0 1 0 if I perform the addition 0 1 1 0 you can see I have got the positive number and uh, if I convert this into a decimal equivalent I am going to get the answer as 6 which is obviously correct. So, in this particular example there is no overflow. So, now I have to add one extra circuit or extra gate in order to identify the overflow in case of signed numbers. So, to determine that just notice uh, the last bit. Okay. So, in this bit if you observe uh, the carry in into this MSB position that means this one is 1 and carry out is 0 there is no carry. Okay. So, carry is in is 1 and carry out is 0 in this example that means carry in is different from the carry out. 
and if you take in this case, even in this case I have carry in as 0, there is no carry, I am adding 0 and 1, I am getting 1, so there is no carry in for this MSB position, but there is a carry out, again they are different 0 and 1. If I see this one, in this example carry in is 0 and even carry out is also 0. So, that means if you observe these examples, we can uh, uh, assume that or we can conclude that if the carry in and carry out from the MSB position, if they are different then there is an overflow, if they are same then there is no overflow. So, that means we can take like this. I have the fourth bit position, fourth bit position is what here, I am adding A3 and B3 using this full adder. Okay. So, now for this what will be the carry in, carry in is C3, C3 into this position and what is the carry out of this particular full adder, it is C4. Okay. So, that means if C3 and C4 are different, there is a overflow in case of signed numbers. If they are same, there is no overflow. So, that means I need to add one gate which is giving me the output as 1 if the inputs are different and output as 0 if the inputs are same. So, obviously from the previous discussions of several videos, by this time you might have you might know that uh, XOR gate is going to produce such a output. Okay. So, what we are going to do? We are going to add one extra XOR gate into this circuit okay. and uh, for this obviously what I want to check the result of this XOR gate. For example, if I take V, this should be 1 if the carry into this MSV bit or carry into this full adder and carry out of this full adder is different. So, that means the two inputs will come from which position? One input will come from C4 and the second input is going to come from here C3. Okay. So, this particular gate, the XOR gate is going to detect the overflow in case of signed numbers. So, the result V is equal to 1 when there is a overflow in case of signed, one, signed numbers and V will be equal to 0 in case of here uh, uh, signed numbers that is there is no overflow. In case of unsigned numbers, the overflow is detected with the help of this C4. Okay. So, I hope this logic is clear, uh, the result or we can conclude the entire discussion like whenever we want to design a 4 uh, bit adder subtractor circuit we are going to use this particular diagram and in this diagram we can perform the either addition or subtraction. If m value is 0, it will play the role of a adder, if m value is 1, it is going to play the role of a subtractor and whenever we are performing either addition or subtraction, there can be a overflow for which we have discussed the different cases. In case of unsigned numbers, the overflow is detected by making use of carry out from the uh, last full adder that is the C4 bit. In case of signed numbers, we have seen the different cases from which we have concluded that we can identify the overflow by looking into the carry in into the fourth full adder and carry out of uh, from the same full adder. So, if the output of this uh, XOR gate, if it is 1, then is there is an overflow for signed numbers. If this is equal to 0, then there is no overflow in case of signed numbers. So, we will be starting the next topic after this. So, we know that uh, 
in our digital systems, the information whatever we are storing is in the form of binary information. So, whenever we are done with our processing, we want to display the output to the user in different forms. So, we need a circuit that is going to perform the conversion from the binary data into other forms of information. So, the circuit what we are using to do this conversion is decoder. So, uh, in this video we will be discussing the more details regarding decoder circuit. So, as I said you a decoder is going to accept multiple inputs and it will be having multiple outputs and this circuit can be used in order to convert the binary information into other coded forms of information or if you want to tell specifically if there are n inputs in binary form, then these n inputs of binary form can be converted into 2 power n outputs of coded information in different forms. Okay? So, we can say that a decoder is a circuit that is going to convert the binary information of n input signals into 2 power n unique combination of output information. So, let us see how we are going to design this decoder with the help of an example. So, now what I want to do? I want to design a decoder which is going to take 3 inputs. Okay? So, when I say 3 inputs, it means the value of n is 3. Okay? According to the diagram what I said, according to the block diagram, if n value is 3, then the decoder will generate 2 power n unique combination of output signals. So, that means 2 power n means it is going to generate me 8 unique combination of output signals. Okay? So, now from this discussion we can say that a decoder for 3 inputs is going to generate maximum of, I am using the word maximum of 8 output signals. It may generate less than that depending on the requirement. So, we can call this uh, decoder as 3 to 8 line decoders. Okay? So, let us see the design of 3 to 8 line decoder. Uh, so, obviously, from the previous videos discussion, we know that whenever we want to design any combinational logic circuit, we have to first identify the number of inputs and the number of outputs. So, from this discussion, we can easily say that in 3 to 8 line decoder, we are having 3 inputs and we have 8 outputs. Okay? So, once we have decided the inputs and output number, let us assign the uh, names to them. So, I am going to assign the names to input as A, B and C. Okay? Then, for outputs, I am using the names as D naught to D 7. What is the reason behind choosing these names? Uh, we will be knowing shortly in this discussion. So, I am going to ch choose D 3 d4, d5, d6, d7. So, we are taking 3 inputs and we have 8 outputs. So, when we have 3 inputs, we know that uh, we are going to get 8 combination of input rows. So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So, we are just writing the binary representation of the numbers from 0 to 7. Okay? So, as I said you, 
uh, the binary information will be converted into some other forms of information. Let us see how it is been done. So, when the value of zero, uh, a, b and c is 0, 0, 0, a decoder will generate 8 outputs among which only one will be high. Okay? So, this d naught will be high and remaining all values will be 0. So, now what is the meaning of this? If you see this 0, 0, 0 is binary representation of a decimal number 0. So, now if you see this output signals, you can see d naught, this 0 is the decimal equivalent of this binary number. So, that means it is converting binary into its decimal equivalent. Okay? In a similar fashion, if I take 0, 0, 1, then what will be the output? Obviously, this is the binary equivalent of 1. So, I have to put 1 here, remaining all entries will become 0. In a similar fashion, what will be the entry for this particular row? 0, 0, 1 and remaining all will be 0. By this time, you might have guessed what exactly this particular table is doing. It is converting the binary number into its octal representation. So, when I say octal, we have only the numbers from 0 to 7. Okay? If you see the table, I have represented 0 to 7 in binary format and in the output side, its uh, octal equivalent number will be having high value. So, if I take this entry, so it is 3. So, that means what should be 1? This will be 1. So, binary number, its oct octal equivalent is 1. The remaining all values will be 0. In a similar fashion, we can complete the entire table, which shows the conversion of binary number into its octal equivalent. So, as I said you, whenever we are using a decoder, a decoder is able to convert the binary information of n input signals to uh, other forms of coded information. In this example, we are converting the binary into octal conversion. So, this table can be used whenever we are in need of a circuit which will perform the conversion of binary into octal system. But the same, but the same table can be used in other situations where we have three inputs and for these three inputs, I am getting eight unique combination of uh, output signals. Even in such situations, I can make use of this circuit, but basically this circuit will be used for binary to octal conversion. Okay? So, once we are done with the truth table, as we have discussed so many times in the previous videos, we will be writing the logic equation. Okay? So, in order to find out the Boolean expression or logic expression, I have to write 7 logic expression, I mean 8 logic expression since I have 8 outputs. So, let us start with D naught. So, in D naught, what I have to do? Take D naught and or let us write on this side, D naught is equal to identify the 1 entries. Okay? So, there is only 1 entry. What is the mean term equivalent to this one entry? This one. So, what is the mean term for that particular row? A dash, B dash, C dash. Okay? So, similarly for D1, identify the one entry. So, what is the one entry? This one. So, from this one entry, uh, I am going to obtain its corresponding mean term. So, what is the mean term I am going to get? A dash, B dash, C. So, similarly, write it for D2. For D2, what is the mean term entry we are getting? A dash, B, C dash. So, I have already you know how to write the uh, mean terms from the previous videos. So, what will be the mean term for this? A dash, B, da B C dash. Then D3, D, D3 what we are going to get? So, D3 
identify the min term. So, 0, 1, 1 means what it will be? A dash B C D 4, what will be the min term? This one we are getting A B dash C dash. So, I hope it is clear how we are writing the min term. I have to identify the one entry. So, here this is the main term generating one entry for this and A is in its uncomplemented form. So, A B is 0, so it will become B dash and C is 0, it will become C dash. So, next let us complete the other uh, output uh, logic expression. So, D phi is this one from D phi I am going to get A B dash C D 6, this is the entry for D 6. I am going to get A B C dash, A B C dash, then D 7 obviously A B C. Once we are done with the finding of logical expression from the truth table, now I have to construct a logic circuit. So, what we are going to do? We have 3 inputs. So, I am writing the input in this format to make the logic circuit look simpler to understand. So, I am taking A, B and C in its complemented form and uncomplemented form. A, B and this is C. Okay. If I take a connection from this line, it will be A and if I take from this line, it will be A dash. So, what is the first output? It is a mean term means I can represent a mean term using a AND gate. Okay. So, AND gate its output is D naught. Okay. So, what are the values I should connect? I should connect them to uh, A dash, then from B dash, then I have to take C dash. Okay. In a similar fashion, take the next AND gate the next AND gate is D 1. So, D 1 what is the value we have? A dash again, A dash, then we have B dash, B dash, then we have C. So, I have to take it from C. Okay. So, in a similar fashion, I need to write for D 2. For D 2 we have um, A dash B C. So, A dash, second one is B, then third one is C dash, I have to take C dash. Then next one D 3, okay. so D 3 A dash B C, take the connection from A dash, then second one is B then third one is C. Then I have to write D 4. Okay. I hope you have you are getting this uh, logic. Uh, D 4 is A B dash C dash. A B dash C dash. Then D 5 A B dash C. A B dash, then third one is C D 6, D 6 is A B C dash, A B, then C dash. Finally, D 7, I guess A B C. So, take the connections from corresponding input lines A, B, then C. So, this is the logic circuit for a, a 3 to 8 line decoder which can be used for binary to octal conversion. Let us see whether it is doing the actual conversion or not. For example, I want to convert binary 6. How do you represent binary 6? So, 1, 1, 0. Okay. So, give the values A, B, C. So, according to the logic what will happen? 
it has to give only d 6 as high the remaining all value should be 0. So, let us try to analyze this logic circuit a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 1 and c is 0. Okay? You can see here when c is 0 or you can say here a is 1 means a dash will become what here 0. If any one of the input is 0, I am going to get the output as 0 here. And again for even this one, yeah, I am going to, uh, it is connected to uh, a dash. So, even this will become 0. Then d 2 is also connected to uh, a dash, it will become 0. And d 3 is also connected to a dash, it will become 0. But d 4 is connected to a. Okay? But it is connected to b dash, b is 1, b dash will become 0. So, obviously, again d 4 will become 0 and even d 5 will become 0, c d 6, here d 6 is connected to a. So, that means first input will be 1 and it is connected to b, second input will become 1 and it is connected to c dash, c dash c value is 0, 0 dash means it will become 1. So, all the 3 inputs to this AND gate is 1. So, this will become 1 and for D 7, D 7 is again connected to here uh, C value. Okay? C value is 0 means even this will become 0. Okay? So, you can see when I have given the binary input as A, B, C, all the outputs are having low value only D 6. D 6 means the binary uh, 6 is been converted into its octal representation number 6. Okay? So, in this way you can design uh, different types of conversion. Like if I want to convert a binary to hexadecimal. So, when I say hexadecimal number, then we are having 0 to 15 value. So, to represent 15, I need 4 ones. Okay. So, when I need 4 ones, uh, how many inputs will be there? We will be having 4 inputs. We will be having 4 inputs and we will be having how many outputs? I will be having 16 output. Okay. So, uh, binary to hexadecimal conversion can be designed using uh, 4 to 16 line decoders. Okay. I hope uh, this logic is clear for you. Uh, let us see the design of uh, few more decoders with some additional concepts added to it. So, now I want to design a 2 to 4 line decoder. So, when I want to design 2 to 4 line decoder, we know that there are 2 inputs. So, 2 inputs means A, B. Okay. How many combinations we get? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And when there are 2 inputs, it will generate how many unique combination of output uh, information? It will generate 4 combination of unique combination of output signals D naught, D 1, D 2 and D 3. Okay? So, 1, 0, 0, this will be 1 and remaining all the things will become 0. And 0, 1 means 0, 1, 0, 0. Again, it is converting binary to it is decimal conversion, but only from 0 to 3. Okay? So, next 0, 0, 1, 0 that is 2 is the binary representation, D 2 will be high, remaining all will be 0, then here D 3 will be high. But here what I want to do? I want to control uh, the working of the entire circuit with the help of one more extra or additional uh, input signal called as enable. If I want to represent this uh, 2 to 4 line decoder, I am going to use the block diagram like this. It is having 2 inputs that is A and B and I can write it as 2 to 4 decoder and it is having 4 outputs, then I can write it as D naught, D 1, D 2, D 3. Okay? So, now, I want to control the 
operation of the entire circuit with the help of one additional signal called as enable. So, in that case what we do? We add one more signal called as enable. So, now if enable value is 0, I do not want to produce any outputs means all the outputs D naught to D 3 should be 0, not even one signal will be output signal will be high. So, now I have to and if it is 1, it will be working as in this truth table. So, when E is 1, we have written the working of this truth table. So, what I will do? I will add one more row into this sorry one more column into this uh, truth table that is E. Okay. So, the circuit will be in normal working mode when E value is 1. So, what we are doing? I will write here as E value as 1. So, now what I want to do? When E value is 0, I do not want any of the outputs to be high irrespective of values of A and B. So, in that case what will be the output? The output will be all zeros and what is the enable value? Enable value is 0 and irrespective of A and B values means I can represent that with the help of do not care condition. So, that means what is the value of A and B does not matter. If enable value is 0, then uh, decoder will be not in working mode. Okay. So, now what I want to do? In the same uh, design, I want to add some other concepts. So, now what I want to do? I want to design 2 to 4 line do decoder in such a way that here E will be a active low signal. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of active low signal? Active low signal means when E is 0, the decoder will be in normal working condition. Okay. If E is 1, then it will be not producing any of the high outputs. So, along with this what I want to do? Even the outputs, I want to take active low outputs. Okay. So, what is active low outputs? Active low outputs means here all the values will be uh, 1 and whichever is our output value that will be uh, 0 here sorry uh, 0 here. So, now let us try to construct the truth table for this. What I want to do? A, A B, D naught, D 1, D 2, D 3. Okay, the number of inputs and the number of outputs will remain same. But now what I want? I want to design this circuit with active low enable input and active low outputs. Okay. So, when it is active low enable output, what does it mean? When circuit is 1, it is not in its working condition. It is not in working condition means it does not matter what is the value of A and B. Okay. And now, what should be the outputs? Okay. I will consider the output which is 0 as active output. Okay. So, that means what will be the output here? The output will become 1, all 1s, means my circuit is not in working condition. In a similar fashion, write the remaining things 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, but these will be in working condition when E is active low. So, active law means what it should be? It should be in 0. Okay. So, now when E is 0 and this is 0, my output should be active low means it will be 0 and remaining all will be 1s. It is just a complement of previous table okay, if you observe. In a similar fashion 0, 1 which is the active in uh, output, yeah, active output will be uh, this one here. So, this will become 0 and remaining all will be 1s. In a similar fashion, this will be 0 and these 3 will be in 1s. And now, this is 0 and remaining all things will be 1. So, that means, this is the truth table for 2 to 4 line decoder with active low enable input, okay, active low enable input and active low outputs. Okay. So, now the question is how to draw the logic circuit for this one. So, to draw the logic circuit in the previous example what we had used, we have used the AND gates 
to produce the output. So, now I have to select the gate that is a complement of AND gate. So, which gate is going to give me a complement of AND gate? So, obviously, the NAND gate. Okay? So, whenever we want active high sorry active low outputs, then I have to make use of my AND gate. Okay? So, let us see how do we draw this. So, for I have to take two inputs. So, what are the two inputs I am taking? First one is A dash, second one is sorry A and second one is B. Okay. Then I have to take NAND gate now, NAND gate for this NAND gate. So, what is I have to identify 0 entry, not 1 entry in this case. So, what is the 0 entry? This one and this will be A dash B dash. Okay. So, I have to take a dash b dash. So, d naught is equal to a dash b dash. So, I am going to connect it to this and this. So, similarly, what will be my d 1 value? So, d 1 will be 0 identify 0 entry. So, what is the 0 entry corresponding to a dash uh, b? So, right here as a dash b. So, take the input from a dash and second one is from B and third is we have one more NAND gate D 2 I guess this will be A B dash that is identify 0 and corresponding mean term is A B dash. Then I have to take the input from A and B dash. The next one is I have to take D 3 which is A and B, then uh, I have to take the connection from A and second one is B and the entire circuit operation will be controlled by what? E. Okay? It is in its working mode when 0. So, that means, I have to take one enable input for enable input. Okay? So, when E is 0, it has to be in its working mode. So, that means, I am connecting the inverter and the input from this is given as the third input to all the AND gates, all the AND gates like this. Okay? So, now let us see whether the uh, circuit is working correctly or not for this combination. So, now I will take E as 0, okay. then A is 0, then B is 0. So, when I take A is 0 and B is 0, so complement means what it will be? This will become 1, this will become 1, 1, 1 and 1. Okay. So, when all 3 are 1s, what will be the output here? It will be 0 here. Okay. And if I take the other gates, so you can see for all the inputs, this enable input will be what now? It will be 0 only. Okay. So, now I have to check. So, here if I give my B value as 0, it is directly connected to B. Okay. So, even this will be 0 and A value is 0, this will become 1. So, what will be the output of 1 0 0 in case of NAND gate? It will be 1. Okay. So, even in the this case, I am going to get the output as 1. You can trace out this. I hope you, uh, the working is clear from the previous discussion and even in this case, this will be 1. Okay. So, you can see when I take A value as 0 and B value as 0, only D naught is in 0 state and remaining all are in 1 state according to the truth table which we have written just now. So, I hope the working of here uh, or the construction of here uh, 2 to 4 decoder with the active low enable input and uh, active low outputs is clear. So, we need to discuss some more uh, problems or concepts on the decoders.
I want to design a 4 to 16 decoder using 3 to 8 decoder with enable input. Okay, so, that means, according to this question, we can design the higher level decoders by making use of here lower level decoders, uh, lower level decoders. So, I want to make use of here 3 to 8 decoder with enable input. So, now, instead of writing the complete logic diagram, we are using the block diagram to just simplify the uh, working of or the explanation. So, I am using 3 to 8 decoder. So, now, when I use 3 to 8 decoder, so how many inputs will be there? 3 inputs will be there. So, I am going to take for example, A, B, C and along with this, I want one enable input. So, let us take it as E. So, now, what it is going to do? It is going to generate how many outputs? It will generate 8 outputs D naught to 2, D 1, D 2, D 3, D 4, D 5, D 6 and D 7. But now, we are interested in creating 4 to 16 decoder. So, when we say 4 to 16 decoder, so what will happen? this enable input will play the role of fourth input. Okay? So, the remaining 8 outputs, they are generated by making use of one more decoder, one more 3 to 8 decoder. In this case, again we have 3 inputs A, B and C and we will be having enable input. So, actually we have to do some extra connection with these enable inputs. I will be discussing regarding this uh, with the end of this topic. Let us first understand the basic things needed to understand this topic. So, obviously, this will generate from where? D 8 to D 15, because I am interested in generating 4 to 16 decoder. So, now what will happen? I want to now connect this enable input as obviously, again active low signal. So, what I want to do? Uh, when enable input is 0, my upper decoder should be in active mode and it is going to generate the outputs from uh, 0 to 7. And my enable value uh, when becomes uh, 1, it has to uh, enable the lower decoder that will generate the outputs from D 8 to D 15. So, let us see how I am going to do that. So, I want active low means what it should be. So, this will become when I give this sorry uh, when E is 0, okay, I want my upper decoder to be uh, active when E is 1. I want my lower decoder to become active. This is E and this is E. What I will do? Instead of E, I am going to take this as D. Okay? So, now you can see when D is 0, okay? I am taking the connection from uncompleted, uncomplemented form. So, it is taking from this. So, when it is 0, okay? enable as 0, this will become active. When it becomes active, there are 3 inputs. Depending on these 3 inputs, it is going to generate the output from D naught to D 7. When I change this D to 1, okay, when I change this D to 1, you can see the connection for this lower decoder, it is coming through a NOT gate. So, when D is 1, so this will become, here it will become 0 and here it will become 1. 
So, that means now the upper decoder will go into deactivated mode and the lower decoder will be in active mode uh, which will generate the output from D A to D 15. So, in this way whenever we are interested in designing the higher level decoders, we can do that by making use of the lower level decoders with enable input. So, similarly if I want to design for example, uh, I want to design 3 to 8 decoder. I can design this 3 to 8 decoder by using 2 to 4, 2, 2 to 4 decoder with enable input. Even it is possible to design 4 to 16 decoder using 2 to 4 decoders. Okay. So, in that case we may require 4 2 to 4 decoders to generate 1 4 to 16 decoder. Okay. I hope uh, uh, with this explanation you will be in a position to design any of the higher level decoders using the lower level decoders uh, with the enable input. So, let us see one more important point regarding gear decoders. See from the above discussion or from the previous discussion, it is uh, very clear that we can uh, your decoder is generating the mean terms. If there are 3 inputs, it is generating 8 mean terms. If there are 4 inputs, it is generating 16 mean terms. So, that means any logical expression which is representing the mean terms with multiple outputs can be implemented using a uh, decoders. Like for example, uh, we have designed the full adder. So, full adder can be designed using the decoder circuit. So, the design of a full adder and other Boolean equations using the decoders will be discussed in the next video. Thank you for watching the video.